Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up, what's up, Winning Cures Everything College Football Gambling Picks Week number 11. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Whoo, boy, and we have got to get off of this slide. It's been a season long, 10 weeks, and I've had two winning weeks. So now you've been better than that. I've been better now. But, I went, but I went, lately. I've gone goose egg a couple times, okay? Yeah, you this have. This past week was one of them, 0-6. L- let, me, let me tell you the way I feel about this week, okay? This, this might be a little inappropriate for those at home. <laughs> this might be a visual for those watching on YouTube that you just don't want. And I'm going to apologize now, but I'm not going to not say it. For the past five, six weeks, whether I've done well or whether I've done bad, it doesn't matter. I've hated the lines. Yeah. I've, I've looked into it, and I've struggled to find a few games that I like. And sometimes I've found several games I like, but I didn't really love anything. And I've been honest about all of that. And then I looked at the lines today, and I could just take hot bacon grease and rub it all over my naked body <laughs> with these lines. I love so much about now. This that doesn't mean I'm going to do well. Let, let's preface that, but I feel all of these things coming my way. Okay. I looked at him and I said, "No brainer, no brainer, no brainer, no brainer." Vegas is wrong. Vegas is wrong. Vegas is wrong. Vegas is wrong. Cashing in this week. Well, I'm glad that you feel good. I don't know I, what that means, and I don't know how that's, that's going to equate. I, I felt really good about these lines at first and was like, yes. And then I, I overthink by the time we get to Tuesday, right? So By the time we get to Tuesday? I know. We because only have to pick till Tuesday. I know, but I've only got Monday night really to look at the lines. right? I, 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 I see the opening lines on Sunday, and then everything starts shifting. And I love stuff on, on opening day. Like, I love those lines, but we can't give those out here. That doesn't matter. So we, we give out. As Tuesday, close to yeah, as close, as to, close to Tuesday night lines now. as possible, because we um, know we're already ahead of time. We yeah, know we're already way early. And for people to think that we just picked the only line, like the way it goes our way, no. Gary had Oklahoma State last week, and then the best receiver for his team went down. You could have got a way better price later. We can't predict the damn future. Still covered. Didn't matter. Still, but, yeah, still covered. But it's just one of those things where we're not trying to take take any shortcuts. We're just doing the best we can. What we got. You know who did the best they could with what they had last week? Tell me. Denise. Denise in our football picks contest went eight and two. She won a free night at Samstown and $25 free play. You can win too. Go into the football picks contest. We got 10 games against the spread, seven college, three NFL. It's free to enter. Go put in your name, your email, and then it's like multiple choice. You just select what side you want for the 10 games that we've got listed, and you decide. Now, these are the opening lines. So you're probably going to get some good numbers with some of them. You don't might mean get you're going to win numbers. money. It just depends on which way you like the game. You got it. You got it. So go and do that over at winningcureseverything.com. You can find everything about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Our Facebook, our Twitter, our YouTube, our podcasts, all of our videos, our picks, our, just our rankings, all that kind of stuff. Over at winningcureseverything.com. Go check it out. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave some comments. Tell us what games you like this week. Tell us what we got right, what we got wrong. We are not shy about this. We we tell you all of our picks, and we don't hide from them. I've had a bad year. Let's let's go ahead and talk about that real quick. Three and five last week for me, awful. But that's about par for the course this year. If you faded me this three, year, three and five is is really good. It if for for me so far this year, yeah. Anybody who questions that all year long, you go three and five, seventeen weeks, fifteen weeks, twelve weeks, shoot. Making money. That three and five? Three oh, wins and five losses? I'm what are you talking about? Out of five. <laughs> no, okay. not three of five. I forget you pick a million games. I pick, I, I pick basically seven, I, eight every week. I usually pick four or five every week. Yeah, no. Okay. three. Is, if, if I went three and two every week, yeah. Everything I just said is wrong, and <laughs> just ignore that, which y'all do anyway. Hey, can easy with the name calling on the YouTube. I mean, you can say whatever That's, the hell you want, but. Did somebody call you a name this week? Uh, I get names all the time. That's a, I, I it, was didn't, not, it wasn't even a mean name. It wasn't even like harsh. And I think they, somebody called you bald this week. But, somebody said neck beard, which is like, oh, I don't even yeah. have a lot of neck beard. I just have a big beard. <laughs> like, this is the beard goes, it used to go down to my titties. Whoo! 
too. <laughs> but 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 like this all beard, like you can't even see my neck. I got a big ass double chin. Cause I'm fat. I'm gigantic. I know this. You don't have to call it. <laughs> Y'all don't have to keep calling people it. names. But here's the thing. I think they agreed with. Me. I think they were like neck beard says, says whatever. And I was like, my name's right there on the YouTube. Yeah, just name. call me Chris, man. It's you fine. See who I like, am. <laughs> That's good stuff. That's good Nobody stuff. Nobody ever calls Gary names. Though. I uh, it's a, man. I'm likable. I'm like every and and, and that and, is true. That and is true. They've all got pity for me because nobody. Feel, no, they don't. Oh my people word! People on the internet don't feel sorry for nobody. Hey, I'll tell you this: there have been a lot of people that have been like, "Man, I love you guys. I've been fading y'all all season." I know. I know. It's I like care. good for you. Come on, man. I'm not bad at Look, you. Check this out. All right, come on. I went three and five last week, lost one hundred sixty-six dollars and two cents. You went two and three, you lost one hundred and eleven dollars and thirty-six. I thought I went oh, oh for oh and six. Oh, last week I went oh. No, six. oh, last week you went oh, oh and six. This past week you went two and three. Okay. Um, or maybe, no, no, no. no it was two right. and three. It was that's two right. and three. It was two weeks ago. I was just yeah. still hanging on to that oh for. You lost one hundred eleven dollars and thirty-six cents on the season. I am thirty-one and forty-nine, which means if you faded me, ouch. You faded me. You'd be doing pretty well. Forty nine and thirty one for the fades. Okay. Uh, but I am down twenty five point eight four units. You are twenty three and thirty four, and you were down fifteen point eight six units. So we we would recommend fading. Just saying. Not this week. Now we now I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting greasy this week. <laughs> I got nine games. The show is. You got nine. You got nine this week. I had 11. I cut two Holy of them off because I refused to hit double digits. I refused to do it. All right. I got to I gotta add some some spots for you here. I, t- I can take them to you later. Hey, thank you, Tunica. He's going to give the read in a minute because I'm really bad at doing yeah. that. But I just want to always say thank you because we appreciate you sponsoring the show. Absolutely. It is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. We recommend all of them. You can find more information on those over at tunicatravel.com. If you are looking for somewhere to go and gamble on a big event, you want to go play some golf, you want to go just have a night out, all that kind of mess, go make a trip to Tunica. Like We went down for uh, playoff games last year in the NFL. We went down for big-time college games last year. And, like, and we both missed it because the big Memphis game. But Tunica on a fight night, it doesn't get a whole lot better than that, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's... They do fights really well. Uh, Conor McGregor will be fighting on January the 18th, and they will be showing it down there at some of those sports books, and they will have it on the big, giant projector screens and all that. It is a fantastic time. So Sorry. we highly recommend it. Yes, I did. I watched Nate Diaz and uh, and Jorge Masvidal, yeah, right. and uh, did not go down to Tunica for that, but I, I've gone down for McGregor Habib. I've gone down for several of the big boxing matches. Like I, I, no, yeah, two, uh, yeah. boxing and uh, and MMA. Yeah, they're they're really good for those. Yes, they are. Yes, that's they good, are. That's and good they, night. Also good for big time college football oh, games, yeah, big time NFL else games that we talk about, but we never talk about those things anymore. Uh, we will in the off season. Football yeah. season it just overwhelms everything. I, overwhelms everything. I understand. So it feeds. We'll, listen, it feeds the machine. I'm okay with. We'll, that. we'll be into college basketball. I've, hey, opening night of college basketball. I'm no. four one and one against the spread that's, right now. That's really good. So it I, and I needed that to get my bankroll back up. <laughs> Absolutely needed it. All right, so go to tunicatravel.com, find more information about what they're doing down there. Let's go ahead. I mean, we are nine minutes into this thing. Let's go ahead and fire in. Uh, I've got eight picks. You got nine. You give me yours first. What uh, what you got? I believe this is a Thursday night football game. Okay. I'm going to South Florida, and I'm betting Temple. Minus one and a half for seventy five dollars. Minus one ten. I think Temple's a better football team. I think Temple's going to beat South Florida pretty good. I am going the exact opposite of you. Oh wow, we didn't talk about any. Of these no, games. we didn't. We I didn't even know you were doing nine. But yeah, but now I know. I have got South Florida plus one and a half for fifty bucks on Thursday night. Okay. Uh, I think South Florida ends up winning this game. Temple has not looked good recently. South Florida has figured out something with this offense. They've got a, a new quarterback. They are rolling teams. Now they they got smoked by Navy, but they have been beaten up on some other teams and Temple teams. Temple going That's on the road has not looked good this year. Yeah, they are um, different. I, I do wish this was a Temple game at home. I I agree with that, but if I think if it was a home game it'd be Temple like minus And seven. Th- this is the traditional Thursday night home underdog ESPN, you know, all that kind of mess. So I I like South Florida here. I think they are finding something. 
Uh, so you and I going head to head on this. Go head to head. I like it. You can't right. f- fade both of us. What uh, what's your next one here? All right, this one, I, I'm going, I'm going against, going against our boy, uh, TJ. I, I've I've got to take BC. I knew this week as soon as as soon as I woke up before I even looked at lines. I don't even know who they're playing. Betting against Florida State this week <laughs> because here's the deal: they fire their coach, and everybody thinks, well, the new coach is going to get it all figured out. But here's the problem: this coaching staff has been around. The entire time. And these players are dysfunctional. They're not just not playing for Willie Fritz. They're not playing for their pl- the position coaches. They're not playing Will, for Willie, the quarterback. Willie Taggart. Willie Taggart. I'm so sorry. Oh, Willie Fritz. Everybody playing for Willie Fritz. Got that right. Shit, I play for him, and I'm terrible. I can I can barely walk him downstairs. I'd, <laughs> I'd fight for him. You were right. I, that was wrong. Um, I, I just – and then I saw they were playing BC. And then my first thought was, is, well, what's the over-under look like? Because – BC can't stop anybody. Kendall Brown's probably going to have the offense looking okay. It's minus two and a half. I think I got to win the game. I think BC's winning this game at home. I think you're probably right. I'm going to have 50 bucks on that one. All right, I can get not down going, with that. I'm not going too crazy. Next up for me, as our, our good friend Pat McAfee would say, Arkansas stinks. Yeah. They are terrible. This is a bad football team. Yeah, really there is bad. no reason why they should be favored over anybody, much less a pretty good Western Kentucky team. Western Kentucky coming off a loss at home against Florida Atlantic. Florida Atlantic's a good team. I told you before the season started. You did. This is a damn good football team. Yeah. Western Kentucky got a good run defense. Arkansas doesn't have a quarterback. They got nothing. Chad Morris probably on his way out, I would imagine. Uh, that that whole situation there is just terrible. That team. I would have bet everything that he had been first coach fired. I'd have bet I, everything he'd have been first coach. I, I really thought the same thing, but alas, we were wrong. Uh, yeah. We uh, didn't get to bet. Imagine, it. Um, imagine that. We were wrong about something <laughs> on college football. <laughs> Holy shit. But I'm not going to be wrong about this one because Western Kentucky plus two at Arkansas. I would take the money line here. Okay. Money line is the same as the damn minus 110. It's well, the yeah, same thing. It, it doesn't matter. So give me the two points. Western Kentucky plus two at Arkansas. I think they win it straight up, but I'll take two points. That's fine. Give, give me that for 50 bucks. I'm going late night Saturday. Late night Saturday. This is one of those I'm either going to be adrenaline high, ecstatic, because my Tigers beat, beat the Tide, or I'm going to be just as inappropriately intoxicated as a person <laughs> can be sitting on his back deck. Either way. I'm going to be awake because I won't want to go to sleep. I'm taking Hawaii minus seven and a half. Got San Jose State coming to the island. Now, San Jose State's played better than we thought they were going to play before the season started. I think this Hawaii team is different. I think they're really good. I I like them a lot. I love their coach. Love their quarterback, the skill players. I don't think San Jose State can keep up with them. Part of me thought, tell them to buy the hook. Do whatever you want with your money. I'm not worried about the hook. 50 bucks. Give me Hawaii. Minus seven and a half. Okay. I'm going to go early morning out in the cold in Minnesota. I'm going Penn State at Minnesota. Give me the Nittany Lions minus seven at the Golden Gophers. I love P.J. Fleck. I love this team. P.J. Fleck got paid today, boys. That's a lot that goes into this. He he got his contract. He got his oh, contract. First, I think Penn State. Last year. And PJ this year. Penn State Man. is going to be fired up for this game. They're going on the road. It's an early kick. I think Penn State's defense wears out that Minnesota offense. I, I just I don't think that Minnesota can throw the football. And if you can't throw the football, oh, not against Penn State. You can't Penn State is going to shut down that running game. And I think Penn State has enough explosive plays against that. It, it's a slower Minnesota defense. It's a good defense. Yeah. Really good. Almost, almost elite but not elite enough to be able to handle Penn State. I like Penn State by more than a touchdown here. Give me Penn State minus seven for $75 here. I was so shocked that that line was so small. So small? Small. I thought, I thought, I thought. It was you thought maybe double digits. digits? I thought it was going to be double digits. I, well, thought, I was I, thinking 10. I'm glad it wasn't. Oh, yeah, I bet. Hell, hell I would too. <laughs> All right. I'm coming back home to, to, one, of, to one of my guys. Okay. Got away from them for a while. They, they scared me a little bit. I thought at one point in time they were the best team in the country. They 
got a couple of couple of, got beat up a little bit. The one against Illinois, unforgivable. Give me Wisconsin minus seven and a half. Got big boy no, Iowa. You mean nine and nine a half. and a half? I'm sorry, my handwriting's terrible. I was like, man, if you got them seven no, and a half, tell I me did, where they. I are. did not. That was a lie. I, my handwriting's just really bad. Thank you, because because <laughs> I wouldn't have called it. Um, how do you just know all these lines off the top of your head? Like you just knew that seven and a half was I, wrong for a random Big Ten game. I. So I studied these a lot, like, which is ridiculous that I'm so that bad I was at this. Bet this game. You, no, but I, I, you. We we should do that sometime. Just have a, a sit down and you start asking me, hey, you coastal just, coastal Carolina at whatever. You just knew like, this, you just knew I was three points off. On it's the like line, Louisiana Lafayette off. at uh, at whoever anyway. and yeah, rambling, rambling. Sorry about that detour. My brain ADD gets off. I like Wisconsin to just they they have a chance to have a bounce back game and and show not just bounce back but show people in the country. Look, we we ain't gone away. Okay. I know we got two losses. All yeah, right. we got beat by I know, Illinois. I know we got beat by Illinois. Last second. Can't, can't undo that. Kind of right? fluky. Yeah, just just did all undid all that. And then we got the hell beat out of us. We stepped in front of a freight train. Yeah, okay? you got beat by the best team in the country no, on the road. Nobody has ever lived to, to, to talk about stepping in front of a freight train. It just, it just got, it's got dusted, okay? This is their opportunity. They got a big boy coming in. I couldn't believe this line was so big. I thought this line was going to be four or five. When I saw it was nine and a half, I thought, I'm still dealing. I'm still taking it. I like Wisconsin, man. Iowa is very Michigan like. In well, Michigan, Michigan beforehand. Can we say Michigan light? Yes. Like I mean, all, Iowa lost Iowa's to Michigan. Is bad. Yeah, Iowa lost to Michigan ten to three. And I think Wisconsin's defense is still really, really good. They are. They were not good against Ohio State, but that's a different breed. Yes. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree. So you like Wisconsin minus nine and a half? What's uh, what's your dollar? I'm fifty. I'm sorry. I'm fifty on that one. Fifty bucks. All yes, right. I am going to to South Texas, Lower Southwest Texas. That's right. And yeah, I know that y'all don't like when I pick these uh, many, these ridiculous in games. There's a lot of initials. Okay. You you got U N C C and U T E P. So like a lot of initials here. Charlotte can score with just about anybody. Really? Uh, I I like love anybody. Really, or people like Charlotte? Anybody? People like Charlotte, anybody. Okay. I mean, they, they, they couldn't I like, score. I love picking with you. They couldn't you. score on Clemson, but they did put up like 46 on App State. Oh, so that's like, good. Okay, I respect that. Yeah. That's a, that's a real team. Charlotte can score. I'm UTEP sorry. cannot. No. Uh, UTEP is terrible. Like, don't get me wrong. They, they got to win over, you know, Rice or somebody. No, that was UTSA. I, I don't even know who UTEP has beaten. Uh, I went with UTEP last week I as a – as a 24 point underdog and they got beat by 26. Charlotte is only a 13 and a half point favorite here. I get them at less than two touchdowns. I think they win by at least three touchdowns, if not more. What conference are they in? Uh, this is the conference USA. You touched the conference USA? Yeah. Uh, how did I know that? I know the conference USA. Well, I mean, there's hell 27 teams in conference USA. <laughs> so. Oh, that, that, that. There's a lot. Who uh, who are you looking at? I'm trying to look at UTEP's schedule. Oh, UTEP. All right, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell me what you got. I want another win. Oh, Houston Baptist. Ah, yes. Houston Baptist. Who else? They they got beat by Texas Tech. They got beat by Nevada. Southern Miss. Southern Miss. San UTSA. Antonio, Florida International. All Conference USA teams. How many did uh, Louisiana Tech put on them? La Tech, 42 to 21. All right, and they scored twenty one points though. That's and Louisiana Tech. I mean, uh, uh, North Texas beat them fifty two to twenty six last week. They've scored in the twenties every game almost. Yeah, that's fine. But Charlotte will put up fifty. But Houston Baptist, thirty six, thirty four. Holy mackerel! <laughs> All right, so yeah, Charlotte <laughs> minus thirteen and a half at UTEP for seventy five dollars. Yeah, pay that man his money. What's up? Uh, yo shot. That's probably good. <laughs> um. All right. We get to a few other games here. Move it on down the road. I really like Louisville this week. I'm plus six and a half at Miami. This is a gross, gross overreaction to Miami beating Florida State. That's what this is. Because I if you look that. at Louisville all year long, Louisville has been top to bottom at every level of football better than Miami. They're, yeah. they're a better football team than Miami. I, yeah, I could see and that. Miami. 
does not have a home field advantage because it's Miami That's and true. nobody's going to football games. That's true. So the fact that I'm getting almost a touchdown, six and a half points, that's ridiculous. I will have them in my in my money line round robin. In your in your round robin. That will yeah. absolutely happen. Seventy five dollars on Louisville. Seventy five dollars. Good gracious. You feeling good this week, ain't you? I, I told you. Feeling it's, good. It's either gonna be a screw job of biblical proportion. And I don't know what happens when we get out of the four thousand dollars we started with. Well, we started with five. Oh, so we, we well, got and that's bad because I already lost a thousand. We we got we got a little ways to go. We got oh, a little ways to go. Well, we're gonna I be, be right. up in these bets. That's a, we 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 gonna be all right. I'm we're a, gonna be fine. Go ahead. Uh, as of uh, of course, as always, at the end of this, we're gonna have our buddy T.J. Reeves, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter. He's gonna jump in, talk some uh, underdogs with us, and uh, yeah, go check out his podcast, Three Dog Thursday, uh, anywhere you can get your podcast apps. Let's jump into. I'm going to Louisiana. Now, I like that place. LSU is coming to Tuscaloosa. Yep. But I ain't betting that one. That one that, that, that line's a little I don't I don't like that line. I'm gonna bet Georgia State minus two and a half at Louisiana Monroe, and I'm putting a hundred dollars on it. That's gonna be a good football game. Georgia State, their their rushing attack is legit. What's that number? Two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. That's I'm getting be, less than a field goal. That's gonna be real. Can we watch that game without having the plus? Uh, no. I think it's a. I think it's ESPN plus. I think it's ESPN plus. But I'll double check that while we're. I didn't mean that. I didn't no, mean no, 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 no. I do this all when, the time. Whenever you get to uh, your pick, but yeah, Georgia State, uh, Georgia uh, State's okay. rushing attack is legit. I have the iPad. And right Louisiana now. Monroe cannot stop the run. No, they can't. And all I got to do is win by a field goal and cover. Uh, give me a hundred bucks on that. Georgia State minus two and a half. I'm all on board with Sean Elliott in that bunch. They uh I, I expect them to win. And I think they probably win handily in this one. Okay. All right. You don't think it's gonna be as good of a game as I do. I I I don't. I don't think Louisiana Monroe can hold up against this team. Georgia State has been really good this year. Really I, I we had a guy on YouTube come out and say or no, on Twitter that hit me up and said, Hey, y'all picked Georgia State to go like two and ten, three and nine. Yeah. And they they're already bowl eligible. Well, like, yeah, we were wrong. Yeah, okay. we were we were. Way, they, he right. he said, "Can you give him a shout out?" You oh, know, I got you. And okay. he, he's totally fine with us being wrong because a lot of people were wrong about this team. This team went two and ten last year. They got it figured out though. Oh no, they're yeah. This is a different team. Yeah, this is way different team. Way different team. And I'm all in. Georgia State minus two and a half at Louisiana Monroe for a hundred dollars. Might not have to watch much of it if you think it's going to get ugly. I watch. A we'll bit. see. We'll see. Depends on if Louisiana Monroe can stop the run. Right, I'm going to say Texas. All right. I got a little Texas, Texas on Texas crime. I got a little private school. Rich boy crime. I like that. Now, you know, I bet against Gary Patterson one time. One time. I got my ass whooped when I did it. Georgia State is ESPN Plus, by the way. 4 p.m. Thank you. One time I bet against Gary Patterson. Lost, lost big. Lost hard. Hurt my feelings. I felt... Terrible for even doing it. I don't care. I don't care. I I am so in love with this Baylor team. The <laughs> fact that I picked them to be one of the contestants in the Big 12 championship game this year makes me feel so proud what they've done so far already. I, I absolutely worship at the feet of Matt Rule. You know that. Charlie Brewer is just a man. Is he the best quarterback in the country? No. Is he the best quarterback in, in the, the Big 12? Not even close. Yeah. But – but he's going to make mistakes in games. I think that's why I like him. I like the flawed things. But you know what they're not flawed at? Their loss record is not flawed at that all. That's true. At all. That's true. And they're keeping this train rolling. I got to win by two. $75 minus two. Give me the Baylor Bears. They're keeping the train running. Here's the I thing like I it. like about it. And this is the reason why I don't feel so bad about bending against my boy Gary. Okay. And this, and this is the reason. TCU has gone back to, they didn't early in the year, they've gone back to, this turnover-ridden football team. Yeah. And if you're going to turn the ball over to some of these slaw defenses, Matt Rule and, and these boys from Baylor playing defense coming at you, they taking the ball away from everybody. Yes, they are. They, go to, they might have double-digit turnovers if TCU has anything to say about it, the way they've been playing. I, hey, I'm with you. I like it. There's no way TCU can win this game or even keep it close if they turn the football over. 
The stats show they can't stop turning the football over. I'm, I'm riding with rule today. I, okay, I'm with you. Uh, that line being so short made me a little little scared of it. I think all their lines are going to be short because they just don't blow people out. They they just don't. I think every game from this point forward, if they're favored, are going to be tiny. Now, I also think after this game, this is the gauntlet too. This is game yeah, one at TCU. Then you got Oklahoma coming to town. You got Texas coming to town. They're going to be dogs. They're going to be home dogs in both those games. Bet. Oh yeah. No, oh, absolutely. I I could uh I could see that. What well, I mean Texas. We'll see. What do you think I'm going to bet when that happens? Uh, well, you go on Baylor. Either way. Don't matter to me. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Next up. I am going to Berkeley. Going to Cal Berkeley. I'm taking Washington State. I'm taking Mike Leach. Line seven and a half. Kind of scared me with that hook. I was thinking about buying it back. And I said, Cal can't score on anybody. You know what Leach can do? Leach can score. On who? On anybody. Anybody. So anybody. That's, that's what I'm saying. Mike Leach at seven and a half against a team that cannot score, cannot keep up. Give me that all day long. I think this Cal team is right there on the verge of quitting. They're so close to quitting because they just, they, they, they're not getting Garbers back from what I've read. Um, Remember, I had Cal minus five and a half wins. You did. They opened up four and zero. Oh. You did. They still sitting on four. Stay, and we in November now. I went know. went zero oh for October. I know that hurts me too. I really like Wilcox a lot. Oh, I, I do too. But but he's got to do something with that offense. But and he, he doesn't. He's not an offensive guy. No, he's not. But he is a head coach, and he's got it. to figure out something to do there. Well, Nicholas doesn't do anything with the offense. He well, hires people that can. They just can't do that at Cal. They don't have those kind of it's, I understand, it's, but he, he needs to hire somebody. Kendall's looking for a job. Yeah, yeah, I think he will be. Just saying. Washington State minus 7.5. Uh, this is easy money, uh, 50 bucks here. And so I, I, the only reason I didn't go higher is because I have seen Cal ugly up games with Washington State before. Because of why? The Pac-12 is ridiculous. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's, that's why, why I do put, 50 bucks there. Don't put a whole lot on any Pac-12 game unless you're taking the dog. Exactly. Because they're ridiculous. Yes. So Washington State minus seven and a half is my my role there. All right. I'm getting I'm getting this is where I'm getting tasty. Okay. All right. I'm I'm either getting greedy and I'm just gonna get my ass knocked off. Or or I'm I'm, I'm hitting home runs. Okay. <laughs> I'm hitting home runs. <laughs> Notre Dame's going to Duke this week. Okay. Notre Dame two weeks ago <clears throat> got beat like a drum. I mean, I mean, taken to the woodshed by Michigan. Last week, should have been beat again. Last week, brought all the way to the brink. I think Brian Kelly and Ian Book are ready to whoop somebody's ass. I think they I are absolutely ready to say, you know what? We're playing somebody who's of lesser talent and lesser caliber. We're going on the road. We're going to figure this thing out. We're putting it back together. We are going to beat the hell out of Duke. I got Notre Dame, minus eight, $250. $250? Boy, you believe in this, don't you? That's a, at $250, maybe you should buy it down to seven? Nope. You're like, screw it. We going all in. All right. I think they're ready to whoop somebody. Whew. But they played bad two weeks in a row. They needed a miracle last week. They got their butt whooped the week before that. I think they're ready to do a little butt whooping of their own. I can believe it. All right. Next up for me, Florida International goes to Florida Atlantic. This is the Shula Bowl. Okay. This is these two teams don't like each other. And that's okay. Florida Atlantic has had FIU's number. FIU is not that good this year. I don't know if Which been keeping one up. is Lane at? Lane is at FAU, Florida Atlantic. Okay. Butch Davis is at FIU. Got it. I knew I knew Butch was at the other one. FAU has looked really good this year. They're only favored by 10 here. Now, I know you say only 10. Look, I think they win this game by three touchdowns. You know Lane is looking at another job, right? That's totally fine. But if he wants another job, he better keep winning. That's all I'm saying. You got to keep impressing people. Lane. I would love for Lane to get that Florida State Lane, job. looking at the Florida State job, you know he's going to be showing out, especially against a, a guy that used to coach at Miami. 
That's all I'm saying. Florida State people really really, don't like Butch Davis. I would really like for Lane to get that Florida State job. Oh, it'd be fantastic. And this is the way that you do it. You're favored by 10. You win by 21. Let's go get it. Fighting Lane Kiffins. 50 bucks at home. Rolling in it. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Next game up. This is one of those first halves. I, I never really played these, but I think this is just smart. Okay. So we're trying to get right. I'm doing things I don't normally do, but but I, I got to get something back. Okay. I, Ohio State's a freight train. They just are. Yeah. Maryland is a is a is a, just a dog team. They suck. This game is at Maryland, right? Nope. It's in the horseshoe. It's in the horseshoe. I got that right again. Two weeks in a row. That is. You didn't call it the big house this time. Oh, you're right. In the horseshoe, 11 a.m. on Fox. Okay. Look at this line a lot. <laughs> Look at this line. First a lot. half line minus 27 and a half. That is four touchdowns. They'll have about the first quarter. Okay. And Maryland won't score. How much you put on this? Five hundred dollars. God. <laughs> you told me it wasn't even close to running out of money. So. No, you're right. You're let's right. Just, let's go big or go home. I mean, you just did 750 bucks right there. Boom. First half, I put. I have put. I wish I had as much faith in my picks I, as you. I did. have put my entire bankroll that I have online on this first half line because I like that it's the noon game. We that we do five, not recommend that you do that. By the oh, way, oh no, y'all don't. You can do whatever you want. This is free content. You pay anything for this? So yeah, there you go. It's free. The only people that paid anything for this is Tunica. I appreciate them. <laughs> That's why I'm able to do stupid shit like this. I put it all on the first half line. You know why I like the first half? Because at halftime I'll have all that money, and then the two thirty games coming around. You know what two thirty is coming around? Yeah. At two thirty is we're, LSU and Alabama. We're so getting, I, I know we're getting doing. right Saturday. Whew, okay. Getting right. Last uh last game for me. And then you got one more, right? I got one more after you. Last game for me. We're going to Evanston. Is this the same one you got? Yeah. I feel bad about it. See. But I don't feel too bad to not take it. I don't feel bad anyway. I'm I'm doing things outside of what I normally do. Well, I mean, we got to win. Got and to win. and one way that we have figured out to win this year. Bet against Purdue. I mean, bet it, a, you bet, bet against, against Northwestern, Northwestern, regardless of the team, because Northwestern can't score. Northwestern's favored in this football game, guys. By two and a half points. How many? We did this in the NFL. And I understand game. Purdue's got a walk-on quarterback and all that kind of. I, I get it, but I mean, they put up thirty-one on, and it's a, a crappy Nebraska team. I get it, but and that crappy Nebraska team beat Northwestern. That's what I'm saying. I'm just. I, I think. No. I think that Purdue can score. Our guys at Westlot, we we all understand and agree, you got to break this thing completely because they can't. Like if Northwestern went on a run and won like three of their last five six games, then they'd find a reason not to fire yeah, McCall. That's right. Then they would they would be back in the same train they are next year. Yeah. No, you you got you got to break this little bitch to the ground. Yeah. They need to lose out and lose badly. Now you you are now correct that's not, there. That's not what Pat Fitzgerald wants to do. That's not what McCall wants to do. That's not what the team wants to do. But if you're a fan and you won't change, Pat Fitzgerald is not going to change his ways if he's not forced to. No, you you're right about that. And he will have to be forced to if this goes down. What are you I've, putting on it? I've got Purdue plus two and a half here. I got fifty bucks on the plus two and a half. Okay. And then I got twenty five on the money line, which is plus one fifteen. Okay, you got some juice there. Yeah. So I'm I'm getting a little bit of juice on it. Um but yeah, fifty bucks plus two and a half. Because even it, Northwestern is averaging an FBS uh it's not FBS worst, is it? No, it is it is the worst. I think it has uh, it's it's under ten points. It's like nine point six points per game. Yep. That's only because they scored thirty points against UNLV yep. in week two. I almost said Nevada. You you you, you take away that thirty point output against that crap team. So let's take away their worst, one of the goose eggs, because they've got a couple, and and let's take away their best, and then yeah, I bet they're averaging like six points a game. Yeah. So you're telling me that they're only going to score a touchdown? Do you think Jeff Brom is not going to be able to score a couple of touchdowns? Oh, Jeff is going to score a lot. I, I don't know that he scores a lot. Northwestern still has a pretty good defense, but you're telling me that he can't get to ten. 
Defense 14, tired. That defense 17. Tired. That defense is tired of being on the field, and this Jeff Brom offense is going to spread them out and make them run and sideline to sideline. Rondo Moore looks field. like he might be back this week. Right. No. So even if he's not, they still got dudes, so and Jeff putting, Brom is creative enough to be able to find a way to score points. I like Purdue, 50 bucks at plus 2.5, and then 25 on the money line. So you like $50 on plus 2.5 Yeah, at a zero. You're doing $500. Yep. $500. $750 in three games. I like these three picks more than I No, that's like that's twelve hundred fifty dollars on three games. Oh yeah. I should probably be better at math if I'm gonna gamble. <laughs> I added those two together and I forgot this one was over here. Purdue plus two and a half at Northwestern, <laughs> you like for five hundred dollars. Those are my two best bets. Holy mackerel. You know what's gonna happen after this game hits his first half? Oh, that money's gonna go away. Uh, okay. It's not gonna go away. I no, need, I don't need that stress in my life. That's it. Look, I, I, what make, I, I can make more money. I could care less about real money. I'll make more. What I what I, I don't I like about this weekend LSU. is Alabama LSU is at two thirty. I'll be in Bryant Denny. Yep. With which no means, cell service, by the way. Well, no, no, no. They've they've got Wi Fi and everything, and it's actually okay. Um, you will have two hundred thousand people streaming off that Wi Fi. It won't be you okay. Might be right. I don't know. It's not going to be okay. I, I'll have to be game casting, and then when we do our recap thing, I'm, I'm going to be watching a lot of it on our way home from the ball game, and then when I get home, I'll have to try and do the recap and whatnot for uh, for Sunday morning. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but for right now, let's go ahead and welcome in our buddy from the Three Dog Thursday podcast, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter. He is TJ Reeves. Every week we bring in Mr. TJ Reeves, the host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast, which you can find on any of your favorite podcast apps. He is also on Twitter at Buckside Guy. TJ, you are finally back from the world tour, right? <laughs> My tour is over. Seattle and back has concluded 20,400 air miles for Ooh. the Tampa Bay Buccaneers since they last played a game at Raymond James Stadium. So we've been all over North America. We even went to London and came back. So I think <laughs> I know what day it is and what time it is, and I'm ready to talk some college football on this with you. Can I, can I share a quick story before we get into all the meat and potatoes that I was out in Seattle last weekend. I love the college game day video uh, from Memphis. I know you guys have been talking about that already oh, it was a fantastic uh, on your show. It was fantastic. It was weekend. unreal to watch that, even though I was a couple thousand miles still away <laughs> from Memphis, watching that and watching the game. Uh, crazy game. Proud alum. I've shared this with you before. I'm an alum of the former Memphis State University. My diploma is a collector's item. So I was beaming with pride. I had my Memphis Tiger shirt on the whole bit while I was in Seattle. We didn't do so well with the college doggies. Mr. Giannini and I did not do great with the college doggies. I I did have Florida Atlantic. They covered last week, but I had USC guys last week against Oregon. Yeah, that was a bad one. It was 10 nothing early, (laughs) and and we're in the sports bar in downtown Seattle. And and remember we talked that that in the western markets like Seattle and Portland and uh, Phoenix, Denver, San Francisco, they all hate USC. They're anti-USC, so there's a lot of hype. So anyway, we're in Seattle, and Oregon starts coming back, and I knew it was big trouble. Here's the other thing. The Utah Utes had won the game in the afternoon. They had come back and beaten the University of Washington in downtown Seattle. So the Utah fans that were staying in downtown Seattle all migrated to this sports bar where I was. So we had about 40 or 50 Mormonite Utah red-clad fans show up, and as soon as Oregon started (laughs) making that comeback, you would have thought that we were at Outson Stadium in Eugene, Oregon, because they were going berserk. And I, I looked at the people I was with, and I'm like, "We got to get out. We got to get out of here because I'm going to get angry and angry at USC." And I got to see the Memphis game because I got the Memphis game on one little tiny TV, while the USC Oregon game's on like 15 TV. Oh yeah. So we had to get out of the bar. So I'm just sharing cathartically with the winning tours guys. That was my Saturday while you were enjoying Memphis and SMU. I was trying to get back to the hotel to a TV to watch the Tigers pull it out, and my USC pick went down in flames. Ouch. Yes, it did, and I think that Clay Helton's career may have also done the same thing. Uh, that was Wait about as bad as it gets. Wait a minute. I sense a trend. Not only Clay Helton at USC is going to be done, but, but one is Willie already Taggart, done. 
You, Willie Taggart is already done at Florida State, yes, guys. You you get home, and the first thing that happens when you get home is the <laughs> Florida State coach who has been there for less than two years no longer has a job. What? Tell well, me your thoughts on this. We can't say this is a surprise, right, Brother Giannini? This is not, I mean, there are a few surprises, like Trump making things up, not a surprise. Right. Uh, you know, Duke basketball having all the best recruits as the basketball season has started, not a surprise, right? No, no this it's definitely, not, it, yeah, not a surprise. It, and uh, I didn't think he was going to be first coach fired out of the season like this, but but he was on the list of considerations. That that team is so undisciplined and, and yes. they continue like they they don't line up properly. They have no emotion when they're playing. There's there's nothing that would lead you to believe that he like he deserved a third year, right? Now what's crazy is you typically are always guaranteed that third year. So but it it became such a just it, it was it was a trash fire is what it was well, it was a I, I think the, the the money people involved realized exactly what you described watching him the lack of interaction with other coaches with the players during the games when things would start to go wrong the lack of motivation 10 more penalties last week nine more sacks against the arch rival Miami not even close to beating them at home uh, just sealed his fate and what they're also looking at is the big picture, the immediate short-term big picture. If the recruiting class for the December early signing period falls completely apart because of all the turmoil and are they going to keep him or not keep him, uh, then they're in big trouble for 2020 and 2021 and beyond with recruits. I, I think they had just reached the conclusion it's a bad fit. Um, I, I know this was part of the sentiment. I I'm, I'm connected a little bit to some Seminoles. Uh, that have some money and know the people that have a whole lot of money. The sentiment was he doesn't he doesn't belong at this level as an X and O guy, as a guy running a program. He's fine at, at USF or at Western Kentucky Group of Five school, but on the big stage, no. And and they were kind of pointing to at Oregon that he was seven and five, and maybe could have easily been because a couple things went his way, six and six or five and seven as proof. He doesn't belong on the big stage. It's easy to say now, but they did not improve, and so uh, this was not a surprise. Now, what's interesting for Three Dog Thursday purposes, will they refocus? They still want to go to a bowl game. They have to win this Boston College game, Florida State, with three games remaining if they want to be in a bowl because they're not beating Florida at Florida at the end of the year in the swamp in the rivalry game. So this is enormous for them to get a postseason game, continue to practice for a few weeks in December. I'm looking strongly at Florida State to be refocused and be better with this turmoil out of the way at Boston College. Feel free to call me crazy, Gary yeah, and Chris, I, I don't but think that, that's, that's crazy what we're going to look at. I, I think it, it, I, I it think helps. I think it's a little crazy. <laughs> I think Odell Hagan's having already had that experience as an interim head coach. I think that helps a lot. He's been there forever. The players, yep. they connect with him in a different way than they did with Taggart or Bryles or anybody else like that. I think they would actually play for him as opposed to Taggart. They, and that, they, they might, but here's the problem is no, no one just plays for their head coach. No, they, agreed. Like you've got a position coach that you're fighting for that gets you motivated. You've got a coordinator that you spend the bulk of your time with that you're playing for and you're fighting for. And those guys are all still there. The undisciplined problems are still there. I, I am staying as far away from this team, and I'm going to bet against them as many off, as many times as I can. That's just my opinion. It's on, I've been it's bad. on the line. Listen, I've been real bad. Um, the money is just insane to me, though. They they didn't just have to pay him. They also still owe Oregon $3 million. Oh, yeah, wait. No, they still have to play South, pay South Florida like $1.3 million from Oregon's buyout from him to get there. This is this is just a failure at an epic level. Yeah. Well, yeah, they, 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 made, they made mistakes. There's no doubt. Uh, they do have some money to pay some of that, and I think they're prepared to wait Willie Taggart out as well, seeing that he's still got four years left, and as soon as he gets another job, it lessens this current buyout. So let's wait and see uh, if he resurfaces, probably not next year, but in, a, in another year or two, 
at a major college as a coordinator or something like that. We'll see what happens with him. But I'm, I'm very curious as to how Florida State responds. One more quick thing, because I know we want to move on, is there had apparently been a lot of infighting between Taggart and Bryles about the offense, about which quarterback to play, and that manifested itself on Saturday in terms of their preparation. If Bryles uh, truly has a point and knows what he's doing, well, now he's got free reign with Willie Taggart gone. Let's see if the offense is any better, any sharper in this game or not because he gets what he wants. We'll find out in that Florida State-Boston College game, and that's an early game on Saturday. So that could be interesting then because we, we both agree here that, that Kendall Bryles is a hell of an offensive mind. Yeah. Yeah, no, well, absolutely. I, I, I there, think, and, and, and I look, think there's, there's no secret. Their offensive line at Florida State is not good and has not responded. And it doesn't matter who's calling the plays uh, from Bryles, uh, you know, pick, pick an offensive minded college uh, coach that's had success, whoever it is. If you can't block people, it's not going to matter. So we'll Bryles, see if Florida State can respond, and maybe they will in a small sample. Bryles has had success without good offensive lines. Well, I don't, you you have to figure out ways to get the ball out incredibly quickly, and and he has been able to do that because they, I mean, they move so fast, so fast. The the other thing so, is, is this week you might be okay in that because he's not going to have to worry about an offensive line situation playing Boston College. So I love Steve Adazio. I think they could score a bunch of points because Florida State's defense doesn't scare anybody. But Boston College didn't stop anyone. Either. Yeah, your best bet might be the over this. Time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it might be. All right, let's uh, let's move on a little bit. This one falls right into your wheelhouse. I am trying to figure this out. How in the world is Kansas State getting seven points against Texas? How does I this have make no any explanation. Sense? Again, we've joked on your show. I love being on with you guys. They build those billion-dollar facilities in Vegas because we all sit back and go, how is that team favored? How is that team an underdog? That line can't be right. Guess what? About 98% of the time, the line is correct. They're right at it or right on it. Yes, they botch some things from time to time. Uh, you know, Virginia Tech getting 17.5 points at Notre Dame last week. They blew that line, obviously, uh, in Vegas because the Hokies should have won the game. But the, the end result uh, here is uh, Kansas State has a road win at Mississippi State as a seven-point underdog. They have the win over Oklahoma. I know Giannini went against them last week in the game against Kansas, and it was not close. So they actually now have back-to-back covers as an underdog with the Oklahoma win and the Kansas win. And here I could understand maybe a three-point underdog, but to get seven, that is very appetizing for K-State at Texas. And I've already gone against Texas recently in the TCU game a couple of weeks ago. I may go back at that again here in the Big 12, boys. I can, uh, I can understand that. Let's close out on this. Another line that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Biggest game of the week. The president of the United States is going to be in Tuscaloosa, <laughs> Alabama. LSU, a six, six and a half point favorite. Explain this to me. Well, I, I think uh, sorry, six, is, six and a half point underdog. Sorry, sorry. LSU is underdog, underdog, right? I knew what yeah. you meant. I, I mean, the, the reality is it's Alabama, the reputation, and they are at home, and they've owned them for what it's worth every year, a different year. They've owned them in the series. So that, that makes you – you put all of that into a stew pot and stir it around. That makes you leery here of that line. But we're all in agreement. Joe Burrow and that offense greatly improved. And uh, it, look, it should be a knockdown, drag out game. We don't know at the time we're doing this show. Is Tua 100%? Is he 70? We won't know until Saturday night, uh, Saturday afternoon. Well, is he 100%? Know he's is not going to be 100%. Like, I is think he 75%, is no. Chris? Is he well, 65%? No, that now, don't I mean, what do we know? I mean, I, I think that's, that makes it even harder to gauge this because uh, if he's not there, that's big advantage LSU, obviously. But we don't know that right now, and, and yet that line is what it is. I mean, does that imply that if Tua was fully healthy, that the line would be 10? So, yes. I'm just, I, 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 read, I, mean, I read this week, or very, very end of last week, it might have been Saturday. Um, it was either Friday or Saturday of last week. That uh, if if a healthy tool was there, they believed it to be a nine or ten point line. Wow! I, we'll and see. I, and Maybe it's going to be this, close. I you can call me a homer. I swear this is not a LSU homer thing. I think that's asinine. I just think you're not watching football if you think 
that even with the healthy Tua, the way Bama has looked and the way LSU has looked, it should be a double-digit line. I just think that's wrong. Now, Bama might get them by that. I'm with, a Bama guy. Tua. I agree with him. Yeah, with 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 the busted up Tua, they might cover ten points this week. It could happen. It doesn't mean the line's right. We will find out, will we not? On Saturday, it's uh, it's interesting. I know Gary, you're going to be on the show for this week. Might you? It sounds like you might be taking LSU. They got to tune in to find out. Might might I take Kansas State? I mean, this is what we do with the underdogs, and we did come through with a few of them last week, including Florida. Uh, Atlantic and also Virginia Tech and the college, and uh, we'll we'll see if the college doggies uh, continue here on this go around uh, Dog Thursday, boy. I'll go ahead and tell everybody just a little teaser. I will not be betting LSU. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I will be in Tuscaloosa at the game. I will not be betting on LSU. I can't do it to myself this go around. It, if I'm not wow. going to the game, I can bet against them. But I'll be there. I I can't do it to myself. I won't be doing that. But yes, I will be on Three Dog Thursday with TJ. Of course, you can pick it up at any of your favorite podcast apps, Apple, etc. Go leave him a nice, uh, a nice review. Make sure you subscribe to it, and make sure you follow the man on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, we always appreciate you coming here and doing this every week. It is always a good time, brother. Boys, thank you. I always love being with the Winning Cures guys, and let's see what happens with the Hounds, with the Doggies. Let's see if we release the Hounds this weekend. Thanks. All right, we appreciate TJ hopping in here with us. Always a good time. Go over and check out his podcast. Hit subscribe. Leave him a review. Tell him how much you appreciate him coming on with us. Uh, he doesn't have to do this. He comes on for free with us, and uh, and he's always a good time. It's always a lot of fun. So I'm going to Tunica. I lied. All that money I put on the Ohio State first half, the Purdue games at the same time. I guess you ain't putting it on the Purdue game. I thought it was a later game. You might want to split the two. Well, I've already put it. Oh, I've already emptied the account. Well. I got to go tunic anyway. Yeah, there you go. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right. You can find all of our gambling picks over at winningcureseverything.com. Uh, this was a little bit longer than usual. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us. I don't ever pick this many games. Yeah. It, it, I do every week. I'm used to you only rolling about five deep. Uh, this time you rolled nine deep. But if you're going to get healthy, sometimes you got to do things a little out of your comfort zone. And that's okay. We, uh, we're going to get right this week. I feel pretty good. I mean, I feel good every week, so I don't know what that means I haven't anymore. I not feel good at all until this week. Well, I'm glad that you feel good. Uh, I may have to look into this $500 thing, but my problem would be I'd lose the $500 when I'm going to lose 50 If ones. I lose these, there's nothing I can do the rest of the season. I mean, not to get back into winning, you know, whatever, but you still won't be out of money, so that's no. good. <laughs> Double it up next week. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Thousands. All right, go to winningcureseverything.com. You can find our picks over in the gambling pick section. Of course, make sure you get your entry in for the football picks contest, our pick em pool uh, that we do. It's a weekly thing. You can win prizes from Tunica, Mississippi. You can win night stays at some of the casinos. You can win $50 gift certificates to the steakhouses, free plays, all sorts of stuff. Uh, they provide a bunch of really cool prizes. We always appreciate them. Of course, go check out Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can find more information about all of their sports books over at tunicatravel.com. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave us some comments, tell us what your picks are for this week, what you like, what you don't like, etc. Share it out with your friends, tell all your boys about it, follow us on Facebook, like us on Twitter, or follow on Twitter, or whatever the hell it is, like us on Facebook, I don't know what the hell it is. Either way, that's going to wrap it up. We will see you guys again next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.